بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم In this lecture 25 of plant metabolism we will be studying plant microbe interactions Plants interact with several microorganisms which are present in soil These interactions are intended for nutrient fixation or other reactions associated with plant growth the most common or most famous plant interactions are with rhizobium bacteria which are for nitrogen fixation we all know and we have repeatedly discussed in various lectures that atmosphere contains 78 percent nitrogen However, unfortunately, this nitrogen is not in plant available form. So, this nitrogen must be converted into plant available form before plants can use it. Rhizobia are a group of bacteria which can make association with the roots of leguminous plants and these association results in the formation of nodules and these nodules can fix atmospheric nitrogen which then plants can use for their growth and in many cases these leguminous plants are grown for nitrogen fixation and after they fix nitrogen these are incorporated in the soil that soil fertility may be increased so this lecture will be centered around rhizo plant microbe interactions why these are necessary how they work and which benefits are taken up from these interactions so as discussed in the last slide and this lecture will be on plant and microbe interactions so first of all uh, let's clear what these interactions are how these interactions work and what are the benefits of these interactions so there is a association between lichens and alga they both spout each other they get nutrients from each other so lichens are leafy or encrusting microbial symbiosis often found growing on bare rocks tree trunks house roofs and the surface of bare soils a mutualistic relationship between a fungus and an alga or cyanobacterium alga is photosynthetic and produces organic matter whereas the fungus provide a structure with which the phototrophic partner can grow protected from erosion so here we see that alga is photosynthetic and it it do photosynthesis and produce sugars which are required for growth whereas the fungus provide a structure with which phototrophic partner can grow let's clear these interactions through this video symbiotic plants symbiosis when two organisms live together by sharing shelter and nutrients and mutually helping each other their association is called symbiosis or symbiotic relationship and the organisms are called symbionts in lichens an alga and a fungus live together and derive nutrients from each other the alga being autotrophic makes food for both by photosynthesis while the fungus provides shelter water and minerals to the alga for example roots of leguminous plants like gram beans etc contain nodules having rhizobium bacteria these bacteria convert atmospheric nitrogen into nitrates which are used by leguminous plants 
Rhizobium depends on the plant for its food. Thus, leguminous plants and rhizobium have a symbiotic relationship. In this slide, you can see a lichens association uh, on a tree trunk and bare rock. And in this slide, you can see these associations uh, which provide food and nutrients to each other. Chlorochromatium aggregatum in fresh water there are microbial mutualism called consortia these consist of green sulfur bacteria called epipions and a flagellated rod shaped bacterium consortium gives a genus species name green sulfur bacteria are obligate anaerobic phototrophs and flagellated rod allows for the movement In this slide, you can see the rod which allows a movement. Slide, you can see the microscopic picture of these associations. Plants as microbial habitats. Plants provide habitat to different microbes, and these microbes provide diverse functions in plants, agrobacterium, and crown gall disease, and mycorrhiza. Friends, like us, plants also require a lot of nitrogen to make proteins. So they absorb nitrogen continuously from the soil, due to which the amount of nitrogen becomes deficient. As you all know, that there is 78% of nitrogen present in our atmosphere, but plants cannot use it in the manner directly as they can use carbon dioxide. They require nitrogen in soluble form. The bacterium called rhizobium can take atmospheric nitrogen and convert it into a soluble form. These bacteria live in the roots of gram, bees, moong beans and other legumes and provide them with nitrogen. In return, the plants provide food and shelter to the bacteria. Thus, we can say that Rhizobium shows a symbiotic relationship. So, the legume root nodule symbiosis, the mutualistic relationship between leguminous plant and nitrogen fixing bacteria, is one of the most important symbioses known. Examples of legumes include soya beans, clover, alfalfa, beans, and peas. Rhizobia are the best known nitrogen fixing bacteria engaging in these symbioses. Infection of legume roots by nitrogen fixing bacteria leads to the formation of root nodules that fix nitrogen. In the biological nitrogen fixation lecture, we studied that these bacteria first infest the root of leguminous plants and then they enter through these infested regions and form bacteroids in the roots and then they fix nitrogen. So, in this association, bacteria gets food from plants and fix nitrogen for these plants. This association leads to significant increases in combined nitrogen in soil. Nodulatal legumes grow well in areas where other plants would not. So in this uh, figure you can see the nodules which are on the root of a leguminous crop, these nodules are responsible for fixing atmospheric nitrogen for the plants. If these nodules were not there, the bacteria cannot enter the roots and make association for fixing nitrogen. 
and bacteria alone cannot fix nitrogen so for fixing nitrogen they must have to make association in this slide you can see the healthy crop and unhealthy crop with nitrogen deficiency symptom the healthy crop have made is a leguminous crop and have made association with bacteria which have fixed nitrogen and thus the plant or crop is healthy whereas the non leguminous crop do not have association with the bacteria which fix nitrogen and thus these became nitrogen deficient and their growth is poor so these rhizobial plant interactions particularly with leguminous crops are necessary for nitrogen fixing and if nitrogen is fixed this is for the healthy growth of the plants nitrogen fixing bacteria need oxygen to generate energy for nitrogen fixation but nitrogenases are inactivated by oxygen in the nodule oxygen levels are controlled by the oxygen binding protein like hemoglobin so this is the nodules with leg hemoglobin protein which controls oxygen level in the nodules critical steps in root nodule formation step 1 is recognition and attachment of bacterium to root hairs step 2 excretion of nod factors by the bacterium step 3 bacterial invasion of the root hair step 4 travel to the main root via the infection thread step 5 formation of bacterioid state within plant cells and step 6 involve continuous plant and bacterial divisions forming the mature root nodule in this slide you can see these all association and step in the first step bacteria or rhizobial cells are attached to the root hairs then excretion of nod factors by bacterium causing root hair curling root hairs are curled then invasion rhizobial bacteria penetrate root hairs and multiply within an infection thread then bacteria in infection thread grow toward root cells you can see this is an infection thread invaded plant cells and those nearby are stimulated to divide formulation of bacterioid state within plant root cells and then continued plant and bacterial cell division leads to nodules bacterial nod genes direct the steps in nodulation nod abc gene encodes proteins that produce oligosaccharides called nod factors and nod factors are induced root hair induced root hair curling and then trigger plant cell division if root hairs are not curled then these bacteria are not entering and not making association with the plants the legume bacteria symbiosis is characterized by several metabolic metabolic reactions and nutrient exchange in this uh, in this slide we can see different metabolic processes involved in these associations these includes photosynthesis then formation of sugars organic acids which are succinate malate and fumarate and then pyruvate then nitrogenase enzymes are found which are responsible for nitrogen fixing fixation in these associations in the previous lectures we have studied that in the previous slide sorry we have studied that these all symbioses are in the roots of leguminous plants however there are some leguminous plants which are capable of making these nodules on the stems as well so these bacteria enter the enter the nodules um, which are made on stem and fix nitrogen from stem instead of roots so in this all lecture we have learned that these associations are necessary for mutual benefits in the rhizobium plant interactions 
the plants are getting some benefits and the rhizobium bacteria are getting some benefits if both these are growing alone they cannot fix nitrogen or neither these bacteria can get food from the plants in the end of this symbiotic relationship plants get nitrogen and healthy growth whereas bacteria can grow by taking food from the plants so in in the, in the next lectures we will be studying in detail these plant rhizopial interactions why these are necessary which advancement has been made in this field and which advancements are needed so basically these rhizopial plant interactions are mostly for nitrogen fixation and this nitrogen fixation can help to improve soil fertility in wake of climate change or global population increase in this slide you can see the stem of a leguminous plant with root with, with uh, sorry with nodules bacteria and these nodules and fix nitrogen thank you very much